Peter, thanks for joining me today. Um, I think just to start things off, it would be great to, um, if you could just tell us a bit about your background and, and how long you've been with Turner and Townsend and, and what your role entails. Thanks, James. So I've been at Turner and Townsend actually 20 years in June. So a little popped up message on LinkedIn to remind me, as if you need reminded you've been somewhere 20 years. Um, so I started as a quantity surveyor, my background, I'm a QS. I did a degree in quantity surveying. It's quite odd, you know, children now are coming through and saying, when did you do your degree? And I said, well, I'm a QS, so quantity surveying. So I've always been a QS. Um, but the role that I'm in now is very different. So I started off working in construction. I've worked in a number of different sectors um, within Turner and Townsend. I've been lucky to work in private and public sector. I've worked in fit out. I've worked in big commercial offices. I've worked across pretty much all the sectors uh, that we operate in. And, and, and even at one point, I ran our business generation function in the UK for two and a half years. So variety is the spice of life, James. And I've had plenty of that at Turner and Townsend. Um, but the role I'm in now is, is a really exciting for me and a real challenge, actually, because it's moved me into a new space. So now I lead one of our large defence commissions. Um, so that's really exciting. And, and it's really exciting because it entails not just Turner and Townsend, but we've built up a team and a big supply chain and some trusted partners. So that's a little bit different to what I've done historically. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me, but very exciting. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's me now. Uh, the job entails really uh, front-end focus into the client. So understanding what the client needs are, understanding how we can respond to that, working with our delivery teams, working back into Turner and Townsend to make sure we're responding appropriately to that. Uh, but it's all about you know customer experience, getting customer satisfaction, making sure first and foremost that our customers are happy and our people are happy, James. And that's mm. really my key role on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. And naturally, Peter, you've, you've obviously been there 20 years as LinkedIn so kindly told you the other day. Yes. What's it like working at Turner and Townsend and, and why have you been there so long, do you think? Well, do you know what, James? I mean, people do say, I mean, you go, go to the old, you know, the old sense of the best ones, right? The time flies when you're enjoying yourself. And goodness me, 20 years has flown by. And I'm not a five-year plan person. I never had one. I didn't set out to get to a certain level and progress and progress. I just took it as it came. But like most people, you try your hardest, you do your best and you progress. So we're going to turn around towns and I mean, it's just full of variety. It's full of challenge and it's full of opportunity. And most importantly for us, it's full of really great people. And I mean, that's what keeps you somewhere, isn't it? I think when you get up in bed in the morning and you're thinking, what gets you out of bed to go to work? It's the quality of the, the work that you're doing, the stuff you're working on. And it's the quality of people you're working with. Mm. So those two things are an abundance of Turner and Townsend. You've got the variety of projects and clients, and you've just got a great bunch of people to lean back on when you need support and pull with you when you're trying to drive something forward. Yeah. So a nice balance. Yeah, it sounds like you've, um, you've worked on some really interesting things, Peter. For people coming in and watching this video, um, looking to potentially join and, and be brought into the fold at Turner and Townsend. What kind of projects could they be working on moving forwards? So, I mean, that's the great thing, James, about Turner and Townsend, the opportunities that present themselves. You could be working on one day, you could be working on a, a new school fit out. You could be working on an extension to a little primary school, which mm. happened to me in the little school up the road that my ch children went to. Turner and Townsend were the cost managers on a little extension there right through then to transform an industry by you know recently in the press you'll have seen we we supported uh, some industry uh, some new industry guidance so i mean you, you can work and then physical projects you could be working on you know we're down at well i mean you can look them up on the internet there's a lot of iconic projects all around the world that we can that we're involved with and anybody who joins us could end up working on so, for example, you know, I worked for a long time in, in our commercial occupier team, and that, that works with large global corporates. And I was lucky enough to get a phone call from a client in Australia who had seen a piece of work we had done for a client in the UK and said, we'd like that replicated in Australia. Um, and, and myself and another guy went to Australia for a couple of weeks and helped set it up. 
And our Australian business obviously then took on the running of it. Uh, and our team in Melbourne then ended up running it. That client has been with us now for uh, 10, 15 years. So the variety is there. Uh, the opportunities to work on different things. Uh, the opportunities to work abroad. I mean, if, if there's anything, if you get out a little checklist of all the things that you wanted out of a job, I think you'd be hard pressed not to be able to find it at Turner and Townsend. Mm, absolutely. And where there is so much variety in, uh, in the roles that people will be going into, um, obviously Turner and Townsend is growing like mad and needs to bring good people in to continue to grow. Um, what kind of backgrounds do people usually come from? Um, and, and what have you seen people having done before to be successful at Turner and Townsend? So again, as you would expect with, it, with the breadth of work that we do in the sectors we operate in, the geographic spread that we've now got, that the background of people has changed. So when I joined, you know, that we needed quantity surveyors, hence I was lucky enough to get a job. Hmm. You know, we get a lot of project managers. We have a lot of people who work in advisory services. But now, I mean, we've opened that up way beyond a core cost and commercial project management business to all sorts. So what we're seeing now is investment, as you would expect. And we're really excited about the next phase of growth for Turner and Townsend. And ex growth's not even the right word. A new phase of, of opportunity and work in things like net zero carbon. That's such a big topic for industry and, and all of us, really. It's not just about an industry thing. So we see a lot of drive into that space, you know, making the world a better place to live, turning over a new leaf, getting to a point where we are now, and we've committed to being net zero carbon by 2030, and we're well on our way to doing that. We've also then got, you know, the advent of digital and technology, James. I mean, goodness me, that has just bounded along quicker, I think, than anybody ever anticipated or expected. So although we continue and will always supplement our teams and continue to grow in core commercial, core project management, core advisory, what we do need is specialist skill sets as well in you know, carbon reduction, sustainability, being good corporate citizens in technology and digital and all of the, that that has got to offer. So there's opportunities really for a variety of skill sets. And I kid you not, one of our graduate intake, this has gone back a long time ago, actually, was a rocket scientist. So you get all sorts and they're welcome to come and have a discussion. And for the benefit of our audience, which is, is, is predominantly procurement and supply chain professionals, um, what, what kind of, could you tell them a little bit more about what kind of opportunities Turner and Townsend has for, for that caliber of candidates? Of course. Well, that, that space at the minute is particularly busy for us. We've been very fortunate and we've picked up a number of you know, large scale transformation projects and programs really around the UK and beyond that mean that you know we're constantly look, on the lookout for good commercial people, people who get commercial. And what I mean by that is the full gambit of commercial. It's the whole life cycle of commercial. So people who have front end procurement, uh, sourcing skills, strategic procurement, all the way running through then to contract management, stakeholder management and engagement, uh, supply chain, under, you know, understanding the supply chain, all the way through real good commercial acumen. So, I mean, we, we have a lot of good people who have those skills already, but we'll certainly uh, happily have a discussion with anybody who has that kind of skill set who's interested in having a discussion with us. Mm. And uh, the question I often get asked when working with management consultancies, as you can probably imagine, is, you know, what, what does a typical week or a typical day look like? You know, what, what will I be doing? And it's sometimes as a recruiter, it's quite difficult to answer that because there is so much yeah. variety. Um, how would you describe a typical day and, and indeed working week at Turner and Townsend? Well, I think, you know, first and foremost, back to that point about, you know, what's priority number one? Priority number one. One of the highest priorities has got to be making sure you're, you're engaging your customer and what you're doing is aligned to something that the customer wants you to do. So what is it that we're engaged to do? And just making sure that you test yourself against that on a daily, weekly basis is what you're doing making a difference. Is what you're doing going to make the client happy? Is it getting towards an outcome that they're looking for? So lots of client engagement, uh, depending where you are in the organization, of course. It could be then that your engagement is with a line manager, somebody more senior than you, who does the client engagement. 
but it's all tailored towards making sure that we're doing what we're engaged to do by the client and going above and beyond what they expect. So I would expect, you know, a, a typical day to be engaging internally with the team to understand what's going on, what we're doing, what the priorities are ahead, then engaging externally with a client to test that, to make sure that we've got it aligned and make sure that, you know, all the way through we're testing, testing, testing. Are we doing what you want us to do? And coming up with some ideas, challenging ourselves around, yeah, we could do it like that, but we could also do it like that. Look at the benefit of doing it a slightly different way. So lots of opportunity to do the right thing and look at do things differently. You know, you know the norm isn't always the right, is it? So don't be afraid to have throw in a little bit of challenge and, and go and have a good discussion with a client. And you personally, you're, you're running a team which is recruiting at the moment. Um, yeah obviously leading a major defence commission um, at the moment. What, what are you specifically looking for people to bring to the table when you're vetting through prospective candidates? So really, you know, looking at, there's a real balance to be had, isn't there, right? You get the technical skills and that's great. Then there's the behavioural bit. You know, will that person enjoy working at Turner and Townsend, working with the teams that we've got and delivering for our clients? And it takes all sorts I mean, there's introverts, there's extroverts, and there's everybody in the middle. And, and that's great because we need a balance. We need a balance of thinking and we need challenge. And if we were all the same, James, we continue to do what we've always done and that might be okay, but we need to, you know, constantly need to be on the change and we need to be challenging ourselves all the way mm. through. So that's why it's really exciting for us to look left and right a little bit and recruit people from outside of the norm because they'll bring a different way of thinking for us. Mm. Yeah. But, but, you know, if you're right down at basic level experience of having worked in the defence sector, for example, specific to defence would be great. Understanding, you know, how the clients operate in that sector, understand what's really important to them, understanding how to behave, the do's and the don'ts. And then, you know, behaviourally, just being open, honest, having integrity, stuff that I'm sure lots of other people say, but, we like to think we live and breathe it. But, you know, for us really, and then we look at, I think, you know, simply, we, we can define now our values relatively simply. And this has taken a lot of work to get values that are simple because I'm sure you'll know most organizations have a set of, you know, have a vision and a purpose and a set of values. But quite often you read them and you think, how does that apply to me? Well, actually, you know, we've developed a set of values that I think are really simple. And I think resonate with people. And if, if these resonate with you, then that's good news, right? Because I think you'll be a good fit for us. Mm. Our values are really simple. We love a challenge. There's, you know, we've got to be brave and ambitious and go and get involved and try and move the world on. So we're absolutely up for a challenge. Secondly, we do believe that we're stronger together. So if we get our teams together and we bring them in and we work collaboratively, client side, contractor side, consultancy side, then we will accelerate the change that, that the world requires. And if you tie that back to, you know, turn over a new leaf, for example, be more green, hit your sustainability targets. We think we'll do that collectively better than we would individually. You know, and then finally for us, third uh, value for us is just bringing out the best in everyone. Mm. That requires a lot of effort, doesn't it? Because that's one-to-one -one engagement, seeing how people operate, what makes them happy, what makes them not so, what withdraws people, what brings them out. So if we think about those three little values for us, easy to say, three little couplets, nice and easy. But I mean, that just, if we think that that's the kind of thing that keeps us going, you know, we love yeah. the challenge, we are stronger together and we love to bring out the best in everyone. You get that right then, you know, you create a happy, a happy team, happy clients and all good for all of us, I think. Brilliant. And underpinned by those values, how would you, how would you say that, that that resonates in the culture that you've built at Turner and Townsend? Could you describe a little bit about the culture? Yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, testament to it. You know, the business is 75 years old this year, but there's lots of people like me have been there over 20 years. And there's a number of people who have been there over 30 years. So longevity is good. And it's a place that people generally enjoy to come to work. So the culture we've built up is one around that. You know, most of our people are up for a bit of a challenge and they don't really just give up with the first little setback. It's like, let's have a work around. How can we get around it? Is it the right thing to do? You know, we do operate as teams. And interestingly, you know, of course, the majority of people have been working remotely for the last 18 months or so. 
And we found that really quite difficult personally because we just actually quite enjoy each other's company. So not being in the office is quite difficult. But we, we supplement that with Zoom and Teams and everything else that you can think of. And we have online quizzes and uh, all sorts of social activities virtually when we were very heavily locked down. That's starting to open up a little bit now, thankfully. But we've built that culture. And, and that's why I think our values are, are um, they're certainly not, we're not playing lip service to the, the, the values. The values are actually born out of the culture we've created. Brilliant. And um, you've touched upon quite a bit of it there, Peter, but why would somebody want to join Turner and Townsend at this point in their life and career, you think? So, you know, I think, James, being honest, right, and you would expect me to say this, but I'm happy for anybody to give me a little ring. Anybody who's watched this, give me a ring and we'll have a talk through it, right? There are opportunities no matter where you are in your career. We have a very successful apprentice development program where people join us straight from school. We have a graduate development program for those who decided to go to university rather than join uh, the working environment immediately from school. Again, very successful, run well, very professional, credited to a number of different organizations. So for the QSs amongst us, that would be aligned to the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors. For our project managers, that would be aligned to the Association of Project Management. Um, we work with our teams people who want to become SIPs accredited, for example. So right at the, at the embryonic part of your career, there's lots of opportunities. Then anywhere in between, from a consultant level right through to a director level, managing director level person, there are opportunities. And the opportunities come about because we've got the geographic footprint. We cover all of the UK. We now cover all of the world. We've got 110 offices around the world. Um, we provide the same level of service in all those offices as we do in our largest global office, which is London. So if somebody wants a challenge abroad and they fancy a stunt working somewhere else, that opportunity certainly exists for us. If somebody has built a career doing something very specific around a subject matter, let's say, or a service line or a sector, and they fancy a change, then we've got the breadth and the diversity of work to do that because we work across the three big segments for us, which are real estate, which covers all of the built environment, essentially, natural resources, oil and gas, mining and metals, renewables, of course. And then we've got infrastructure, which is the large, you know, large scale, major infrastructure programs and projects and portfolios all around the world, really. So if somebody fancies a change or somebody just wants to do what they've always done, but do it in a different environment, for a different set of clients with a different working model, then I think the opportunity certainly exists within mm. Turner and Townsend to do that. And how would you describe your immediate team, Peter? Well, I, I'm lucky at the minute, James, and that I've got a very diverse team, all of whom report to a variety of different people, and I just get to move pieces around left and right to try and <laughs> make sure that we're aligned to the client goal. Um, so my team is uh, is in terms of it's vertically up and down the whole business from brand new apprentices who have just joined us who are helping me out personally just understand where we are and, and that the commission is functioning appropriately right through to very senior people who are engaging on a day-to-day -day basis with our end user client to make sure that they're happy and everybody in between. I think um, a lot of people out there watching this might be thinking about going into a consultancy role, but I think when I speak to people, sometimes there's a little bit of pushback on the, um, the, the workload and the travel and all those elements that go into the role. And the world's changed a little bit since COVID. Um, yeah. What are your views on, on kind of hybrid working and flexible working and time spent on site versus in the office versus working from home? Yeah. So, you know, interestingly for us, again, historically, um, our big focus, of course, was, was construction, the construction sector which is quite traditional by its very nature. And of course you're building stuff. So therefore you have to be on site if you're involved in the day-to-day -day delivery. Uh, so for a, long, for, for a long time, that was the view of the construction industry. Then you know, the pandemic came along and, and changed a lot of things. Uh, like a, a number of businesses, our business went overnight almost to remote working, which has worked very, very successfully for us, which is testament to the 
uh, infrastructure backbone that we had established and our IT and technology teams and everything else. So we, we've, we've not had any glitches working remotely. Um, what I would say though, is if we think back to some of the points that I made earlier, we were very collaborative. Our industry needs collaboration and our teams definitely work better together. They are stronger together. And in order to get it, bring out the best in everyone, James. Um, particular across the board, regardless of grade, you do need human interaction, don't you? And 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 you need that. You need the bouncing. You need the social interaction. You need some coaching, some mentoring, some training, some help, some advice, or some support. And quite often, it's easier to do that when you're face to face. That said, though, I mean we've we've got to a position now where. Uh, everybody has been working remotely, so it, it, it wasn't just us or wasn't just you or wasn't somebody in the middle. It's sort of everybody. And now as we start to move out of that a little bit, I think first and foremost, and back almost to the priority list, equal priority, I would suggest, and some may disagree, is you know, client need and personal need, you know, personal well-being, what works well. And it doesn't, it's not the same for everyone. I can see you've got a great environment there, James. I'm lucky I've got a nice environment, albeit some dodgy board games in the background. But, you know, we, we're lucky. We have an, I've, I have a decent home working setup. That's not the case for everyone. So following government guidelines, our offices that we're allowed to have remained open to allow those who find it very difficult to work from home to go and work in the office. Um, but there's no, I mean, there, there, there's no edict, no mandate. You don't have to be there or there. We work around that. We agree it with the clients. We try and work um, hand in hand with the clients, managing the client expectation, the personal, and the personal well-being aspect. So I think as we start to come out of it, James, and it opens up a little bit, more and more will be done around, right, let's get the priorities aligned, understand what's required, when do we need to be, in a client office? When do we need to be in our own office? What are the days that possibly you could work remotely? And I mm. could be at home, it could be in a, somebody else's office. And I think that will all start to develop. And at some point we'll get back, we'll, you know, the, the norm will be slightly different to the norm now, but probably different to the norm from two years ago. Mm. So I think, you know, we're, we're flexible, fairly relaxed about it. Um, we'll, it, it, it's all new to everyone, isn't it? So yeah. we're keen not really to try and just say, right, this will be the new way of work. And I think we're flexible enough to wait and see what happens. So if somebody wants your this. point, actually, sorry, one, one point. Go on. one, yeah. make. What we're finding about, we get a lot of major projects and programs that clearly have a base. So that could be in the Southwest, for example. It could be in Scotland. It mm -hmm. could be in the Midlands. At the minute, what we're saying is there's opportunity for people to work on those, regardless of their location almost, as long as they're flexible enough to understand that when things do open up, there may be a requirement to spend a couple of days a week in the client office or on a client site. And that just brings a new element of flexibility as well. So let's say there's a big opportunity in Bristol. You don't necessarily have to live in Bristol to work on that opportunity, as long as you're flexible enough that you could go to Bristol a couple of days a week or three times a month or whatever the agreement with the client is, then that flexibility exists now as well. Mm, fantastic. And I think I think that approach, Peter, will open up a whole new, and probably has opened up a whole new talent pool to you, which historically yes. may not be as accessible. Agreed. Lee, what, what are your kind of final parting points to anybody watching this? Um, well, anybody watching it, I hope you're safe and well, first and foremost, and I hope you're seeing some ease in the restrictions and I hope you're enjoying the sunshine. Um, but look, if you're, if you're interested in having a discussion about potential change in career, change in direction, then I honestly believe that Turner and Townsend offers as much opportunity as, as anybody else does, if not more. I do think we've really had a long, hard look at ourselves as we've reached our 75th uh, anniversary. We've looked at what's important, what's important to the, the entire environment, the world that we live in, what's important to our clients and what's important to our people. And we are looking at building a business as we move forward now that really is green at the heart, inclusive around everything that we do and the people who work for us, and, and productive, moving towards a productive world. So bearing that in mind, 
then I think there's so much opportunity, opportunity to stretch, opportunity to grow. Um, and we're ambitious and we continue to be ambitious. You mentioned growth, James. You know, we don't set out necessarily to, to look at the growth or measure the growth. Well, we measure the growth, but you don't, we don't necessarily just go, right, the key thing is that metric. That's a whole combination of things. So I think it's a very exciting time as we move forward and we start to release from uh, the current pandemic. I think it's a very exciting. I think the opportunities are abound. Um, so I would just ask anybody, if you're, if you're interested, get in touch with James and get in touch with me and we'll have a discussion. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your time today, Peter. Very welcome, James. Thank you.